Howdy, and welcome to Play Game Spread Joy. I'm Justin, aka Jaybird, the Word. Today, I want to talk about the top five publishers whose booth I want to visit while at Gen Con. As many of you know, I'll be at Gen Con again this year, helping with the Weird Giraffes booth. Uh, that means I may not have as much time to visit every booth throughout the con, because I'll be working most of almost every day in the booth. So that means I have to be selective about where I go, where I visit, and what games I try to check out. So, let's get into it. Coming in at number five, I want to run by Atlas Games booth. The game that I really want to check out from them right now is Dice Miner. Now, you've probably seen some stuff floating around already on the internet where people have been playing it, buying it, already have it available. So, I know it's not going to be brand new at the convention, but I've seen enough of it. I want to check it out in person before I click buy or purchase it directly from them. Now, this is a choose your hero, push your luck style game. And then if you've seen pictures of it, I'm going to try to show you some of those as well right here. We'll scroll through the website. It looks like it's going to have some really great table presence. As you can see, 3D mountain that the dice are on, because I love dice. I'm a dice goblin. So, seeing a game with this many custom dice, let alone says, hey, take a look at me, shinies. And then another additional thing, I enjoy my solo modes, either playing alone, playing on Twitch, showing off these games to y'all, hanging out, chatting with y'all while I play the solo mode is just as important to me because I don't always have a chance to go play at someone else's house or a game store with someone. So I want to be able to play it alone. So that saying, Dice Miner has a solo mode. Um, so that alone says, hey, another great reason to check me out. Who doesn't enjoy a good dwarf fantasy hero style game? Not everyone does, but I do. So with that, that's, chicken, that's checking so many different boxes for me already. Custom dice, uh, solo modes, fantasy heroes. It's And then looking at the artwork of these heroes, it has... A nice way that it pops without being over the top too much detail that drowns itself out and it looks like the, even the iconography is very clear so it looks like I'd be able to dive in very fast and start playing without having to study rules for way too long there's so much going on here that I could see the potential for a lot of replayability it does talk about a difference between standard and deluxe editions now no guarantee I'll be able to find a deluxe edition that's always fun to find if it's at a decent price so that was atlas games uh there's one main game that's checking me off pulling me to their booth but that came in at number five coming in at number four for the publisher's booth who i want to visit while at gen con is going to be elf creek games and the game i want to check out from them is merchants of the dark road now this game is a recent kickstarter of theirs that they're in the middle of working on fulfillment for. This is a rondelle style, so kind of moving around in a circle, doing actions, but it's work replacement with dice workers. Like I've talked about, I'm a dice goblin. I want games with dice, and, and I love a good work replacement game. So combining the two is always a great combo. Some of my top favorite games right now include dice as work replacement. Now this is going to be a one to four player game, so again, it's going to have a solo mode I can play, either alone, or on Twitch, uh, showing it off. And then, of course, the four-player count, weekly game nights, I can take it to that if that's something my group wants to play. Now, this the weight of this is uh, says 2.93 out of 5. So it's a medium slash medium heavy. Now, that is almost perfectly in the wheelhouse of types of games I typically aim for that I enjoy the most. Now, granted, I may not be able to buy it, considering how many copies they may or may not be able to bring. They talked about in their latest update for Kickstarter how they're going to be air shipping some of the first print runs and have a limited number at the convention uh, before backers actually get it. But I at least want to check it out. Coming in at number three is going to be Red Raven Games. Now, this almost didn't make the list because I wasn't sure if the games would be available to buy and i still don't know what i do know is it's possible that they will have it but i can at least check out the games and then pre-order online the games i'm talking about number one 
Now or Never. And the second one is Sleeping Gods. Now, Now or Never is the third in the line of the storybook collection of games they have. Like, Above and Below, Near and Far, and now they have Now or Never. Now, I've, all, I've enjoyed the artwork style of both the previous two games in the series. But what stuck out to me is they finally have a solo mode, which means I can enjoy the game alone. And I don't have to wait till game night to try it. This has action drafting, hand management, tile placement, variable player powers, like just a lot of checkboxes of things I know I've enjoyed in the past. So it's kind of like, why would I not enjoy this? So my plan is to go check out their booth and because they mentioned on their website they will have early copies of the game to check out. Now, the second game I want to check out and learn more about at Red Ravens Games is Sleeping Gods. Now, I've, there's been plenty of videos and information already out on the internet about this. It's If you go online to Red Ravens' website, even their the main game is sold out essentially like they're there's more popular than they anticipated what caught my attention about sleeping gods is of course solo mode but it's a campaign style game i can play solo it's hand management push your luck storytelling uh when you're playing solo it means i can kind of pursue the story on my own it looks like great artwork a lot of accessories you can pick up with the game so that's two games not guaranteed being able to buy at their booth but highly likely that we can pre-order or do something like that. But they had two games I wanted to check out that I couldn't avoid um, not putting on this list. Hopefully you agree with me. If not, comment below what you think about those games or if you think I should have picked something else. Number two is going to have actually three games at the booth that I really want to learn more about. It's going to be at Ra Ravensburger. So, three different games I want to check out from them. First off, I've been on the fence about it, so I want to see it in person. Try it out. It is Disney Gargoyles Awakening. The little miniatures that seem to be in the game look cool, at least in pictures that I've seen. Um, it's a co-op game. Granted, my group doesn't play those as much. And this does not have a solo mode, so that's why I've been on the fence about it. So I want to be able to check it out at the booth and see if I really should pick it up. But the two key games I want to check out from Ra Ravensburger. Number one is Horrified American Monsters. Now, I've enjoyed Horrified with my game group before. It has solo modes. And this adds is a standalone game, which adds and uses a lot of different uh, American Nightmare Beasts. It's going to have stuff like Bigfoot. Mothman, Jersey Devil, Cupacabra, Banshee, or Badlands, Ozark Keller. So these are not necessarily as well known around the world. They're very U.S. specific. But if it has the same game play style as the first Horrified game, the same artwork style, I could see my group really enjoying it. Hopefully I can check it out, really learn more about it while at the convention. The last game that I want to check out at Raven's Burger Booth that I should actually be able to buy is going to be Alien, Fate of the Nostromo. Now, this is another co-op game, but it also has a solo mode. So, of course, it's going to be based off of the IP of the Alien movies, uh, where you can kind of choose one of the different characters to play as, variable player powers. It looks like it's an action point allowance system, so on your turn you can do so many actions. I want to check out the gameplay and see how well they've integrated that compared to the movies. So before I move on to my number one publisher that I want to visit while at Gen Con, let's go to an honorable mention that almost made the list but not quite. It was Portal Games. And the game that I want to check out and see if, uh, see if they have more information about is Dreadful Circus. It's a set collection, betting and bluffing game whose artwork really caught my eye, which not everyone will enjoy. So I want to check it out, learn some more, kind of potentially find out a release date on it. So coming in at number one for me, for the publisher's booth who I want to visit while at Gen Con, is going to be Thunderworks Games. Now, 
if you've been to my channel before, if you've watched me on Twitch, you know that one of my favorite games is Cartographers. It's quick, simple, fast to set up. It's one of the few flip or roll and write style games that I've truly enjoyed and go back to continually. But Cartographers Heroes, which is the next phase version of Cartographers, so it adds more maps, it adds more uh, different hero characters, it just adds a lot more depth and value to that style of game. And I know I, I'm going to play it a lot. And then the other game that I really want to check out at Thunderworks Game Booth is going to be Role Player Adventures. But this is uh, something that I can add on to one of my favorite games. Role Player, where we're essentially creating characters with the dice. This then allows you to take your characters on an adventure, essentially. So there's, of course, dice rolling. There's narrative choices. Um, so just in general, the way they've come up with something to continue the legacy of the role player universe and expand what was initially just roll dice, uh, draft them, and create a character. Now, now we're, they went to monsters and minions, friends and familiars, and now we're taking those characters on adventures. Just seems like the perfect next step. And y'all know I really enjoy Thunderworks games in general. I've started uh, working with Tim and showing off games. I want to meet Tim at the booth. I want to check out the games. If they're ready to buy, I'll probably buy them right then on the spot because I can afford it now. These are the ones that top of my budget list uh, that will get the money first type of games. Now, granted, I may not be able to buy them because of the shipping issues that have been going on for all companies uh, within board gaming and outside of board gaming. If there's uh, a booth you feel I missed, let me know, know down below. I will try to visit as many of them as possible. But of course, these are the top ones I really want to go buy. Check out the games they're going to have. Try to buy some stuff. Now, of course, there are going to be plenty of other booths where I go check out accessories. Or I check out dice. Probably going to buy at least one dice set. I do it every convention. But in general, I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to play some games with people. Hopefully, I'm going to spread some joy. Hopefully... If you're there, we can meet up. I can play a game with you, spread some joy, make you feel welcome at the table. If not, stop by the Weird Giraffe Games booth while I'll be selling and demoing games for them. And stop by, say hi. So with that, those were my top five publishers that I want to visit while at Gen Con. Who would you visit? What games do you want to know more about? If you're going to be there, comment below. Let me know. In general, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the hobby. Thank you for helping spread joy, uh, being inclusive, respecting everyone. And in general, thank you for following. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking all those, you know, wonderful things we do here on the videos to help each other out and supporting each other. That all makes a big difference. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful week. Play games and spread joy.